Thank you and welcome. I'm Father Mitch Pacwa. Welcome to EWTN Live, where we bring you guests from around the world. But tonight we're going to be talking with Ju Julie Dorch Cragen about sacramentals and how they can strengthen our faith in God during the various circumstances of day-to-day -day life, especially on a day like this, Ash Wednesday, where we get a sacramental. Before we talk about sacramentals and Ash Wednesday and Lent and all that, we want to talk about day-to-day -day happenings within EWTN Radio. So we have our EWTN Radio General Manager, Mr. Jack Williams. Jack, how you doing? I'm good, Father Mitch. How are you? I'm well. Now, when you give me a blessing, does that make me a sacramental? No. Okay. Next, so. what else you got on radio? Well, it is Ash Wednesday. We spent an hour together today on the radio yes. on this, uh, this Ash Wednesday. We've got some wonderful Lenten programming coming up uh, during this next uh, season of 40 days on EWTN Radio. On Sunday evenings, we're going to have Lent, A Season of Grace, which is a series of meditations by Father Cedric Pasenga. And uh, that'll be Sundays during Lent, 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time on Sundays, March 10th through April 14th. And then we've got a very special event on St. Patrick's Day. We're having a, a St. Patrick's Day Marathon. Uh, Augustine Institute Radio Presents uh, put together last year for us a radio drama called The Trials of St. Patrick. Ooh. And we aired that over four consecutive Sunday evenings. So we're going to bring that back on St. Patrick's Day this year. And we're going to have a little marathon and run the entire radio drama from noon to four Eastern time on St. Patrick's Day right here on EWTN Radio. You know, that's a lot better than what they do at the secular celebration, where a lot of them <laughs> go on trial for other behavior. Yeah, that's exactly usually right. Usually drunkenness. That's right. So this is a great alternative to that folly. Well, good. It certainly is. And then, you know, we have all of our uh, normal Father Benedict Groeschel. We'll give you little two-minute reflections throughout the course of the day. Uh, and things like that, and people can find out. And I would offer people, instead of, well, you could, you should give something up for Lent, I guess, but make it kind of a positive action and do something yes. for Lent. Invite somebody to listen to EWTN Radio. They yep. can find us at EWTN.com on the EWTN app, Sirius XM Channel 130, uh, Roku, Apple TV, over 365 AM FM stations uh, around the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, and they can find out all that information at EWTN.com slash radio. Well, thank you, Jack. And we're going to be back with uh, a little bit more about tonight's guest. So please stay with us. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, and welcome back. Our guest tonight says that we are in a time when we need every bit of help we can to keep our children and ourselves on track in living a truly authentic Catholic life with our eyes and our minds focused on Jesus Christ, focused on God, and on good, holy things. The world wants to distract us with a lot of nonsense and sometimes some very bad things. So chances are that if you grew up in a Catholic home, your parents and grandparents gave you some good examples like praying the rosary, saying novenas, having statues and pictures and saints' images around the house and holy cards. All those help us keep focused on faith and trust in God. These are called sacramentals. 
and they continue to help us today. So here to tell us more about the rewards and promises of joy associated with the use of sacramentals, please welcome the author of the book called Amazing Graces, The Blessings of Sacramentals with Mrs. Julie Dortch Cragen. Julie, Hi. welcome. Thank you. Good to have you here. So, uh, you live up in wonderful city of Nashville, Tennessee, a uh, place that lots and lots of fond memories of great friends that I had up there, as well as uh, a fantastic time studying over at Vanderbilt. And, um, and of course, you run St. Mary's Bookstore. That's right. Right, That's yeah. Right. You know, I used to get up there. It was the only bookstore, Catholic bookstore in town. That's right. Um, and in addition to running that, you're helping to stock the shelves by writing books. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and this book, Amazing Graces, The uh, Blessings of Sacramentals, the, this is a good idea because in the, the kind of breakdown of a lot of Catholic culture and, uh, uh, and the, the taking for granted when the, the church and the Catholic school were kind of the center of social life. That's how I grew up. Everything centered around our parish school and church. And having the sacramentals around was normal and the sisters used to teach us what they were. We don't have that so much anymore. So we need you to tell us, first of all, what is a sacramental? Well, um, a sacramental is um, an item or a blessing that actually brings us to the fruits of the sacraments. Um, you know, it enhances our, can enhance our daily life with the graces that we receive by using them. But the difference between that and a sacrament, I mean, of course, a sacrament is instituted from Christ and a sacramental is, is given from the church. So uh, uh, you use the old Baltimore catechism definition that still works for me. A sacrament is an outward sign instituted by Jesus Christ that communicates grace. Right. right. But sacramentals, as you say, not necessarily started by Jesus, not opposed to him. Right. But he didn't start them, did he? Right, right. Started by the church. Right. You give it to us by the church. Right. right. Exactly. And uh, also, they don't give grace the way a sacrament does. That's so correct. when you read, receive the body and blood of Christ in the Holy Eucharist, you can be guaranteed this is the body and blood of Christ. Right, right. And when water is poured over you and the formula of baptism is given, you are baptized in Christ. That communicates the grace of baptism. Right. But sacramentals don't. You know, they, they, they're sort of a secondary emanation or extension. Right. Idea, extension it can bring sentence. us to the grace. Yeah. It can bring us to the graces right. that we receive but for, from the sacraments, correct. But the sacramentals right. depend more on our faith, don't they? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And our intention, I think, you know, if, if I can s sell somebody a rosary to hang in their car, but if they're not going to use the rosary, if, they're, if it's just a decoration, the same as, you know, think about in our house, in my own home, the crucifix that's on the wall. Do, does it bring me to Christ every day? Do I look mm -hmm. at that crucifix and see what he's done for me? Does that consciously bring me to Christ, mm -hmm. you know, and that's where I think some of it, we might have sacramentals, we might know of them, but are we really intentionally using them, intentionally, you know, gathering the graces that can come that can bring us to the sacraments? So with the sacraments, Jesus Christ personally guarantees that his grace is bestowed in the sacraments. With the sacramentals, the graces that we receive depend on our faith and good attitude. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Wouldn't that be? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, 
I think so. You know, I'm, I'm looking at, I can't get my eyes off the ashes on your forehead, yeah. you know, today. And of course, you know, in, in the mass today, we, we hear that the ashes remind us of our mortality and they right. remind us to, uh, for, to come to repentance, mm -hmm. you know, the, to be sorry for our sins. And, but at the same time, I kept thinking, you know, what else, what can we gather f more from the, the sacramental of the ashes? And I thought, when we burn the palm to get the ashes, there's a change. And I thought, that's what we need. We need the starting of our Lent to be about change. You know, you can give up something all you want, you can, but if you don't do it for the right reason, if it doesn't change you in some way, and you know, like um, y'all were just talking about the Catholic radio, if that could be one of our things that we don't necessarily give up something, but it changes us to, listen to Catholic radio during the Lenten season and then bring us, a, that's a natural thing for us after that. Then we listen to Catholic radio more often and it brings us closer to Christ. See, there'd be a lot of people who would say that being forced to listen to my show would be an appropriate <laughs> Lenten penance. Yes. <laughs> oh, and so, gosh. You know, this, uh, but you, you bring up something about the ashes. You mentioned about burning the poems. Tell us where we, how, What's that connection between the poems and all this? It's not these poems. <laughs> well, Which the poems palm, do the uh, palm get branches burnt? that we receive for Palm Sunday? All right. So the palm blessed. branches we receive right. last Palm Sunday. Right. Right. Which themselves are blessed. Yeah, right. Sacramentals. They're sacramentals also. Right. Right. And then they get burned, and that's where we make the ashes from. So you know, I brought some of the uh, ashes from today that the, you can even see little bits of the palm uh, right. branch in there. Right, that's right. And that's, I mean, and, and that's what I'm talking about with the sacramentals. It's, it's more than just having it. It's more than just possessing it. And it's really more than just using it if you don't use it with the, the proper intention to mm -hmm. bring yourself and others to Christ. You know, it's not all about us, surprise, you know, surprise, but it's, it's really, I, I even thought about people who come into the store and buy a sacramental for a gift for someone else. And I'm thinking, do I think as they're purchasing that, do I think God give that person the the grace to pass on that sacramental so that it will be used in mm -hmm. the proper, in the pro not only the proper way, but to bring them closer to Christ. Right, right, exactly. The rosary or the, or the picture or the, you know, statue. I mean, it's not about the statue itself. It's about the person who uh, the statue is of, and then they can see a holy life and they can live a holy life themselves. They can emulate that life, you know. You see, that, that's also important because Every so often, uh, going back to the uh, uh, seventh century, you get folks who say, well, you guys are worshiping statues and icons. Um, is that what you encourage people to do when they buy statues at your store? Yeah, we don't worship statues, of course no. not. But, no. you know, it's the people that they, you know, that they represent. And, and of course, the faith they represent. But you know, when you get a statue of Mother Teresa, or you don't think, oh, I worship the statue of Mother Teresa, you know, right. you think about her life and what she did for, mm -hmm. for the, her country and for our country and everybody else she touched. And, and you want to be like that. You want the love. You want, you want the kind of love she had. I mean, who wouldn't want that? But that's the thing. It's, it's not about the thing. It's about the, what it brings to mind. And, and that's not too unlike having images, pictures of your family. You remember your parents and siblings and all and children, grandchildren. It, it, it's not because you worship them, right? you know, but you, you love the memory of them and that is a good reminder. Right, right, right. And that's, and that's the good thing about the sacramentals. They are a reminder. I mean, they, they are a reminder to, to do the right thing and, and to pray and to, you know, think about the lives of other people who have gone before us. And so. it's important to see that uh, they do point to something beyond themselves. That's a transcendent 
idea with them. They point beyond themselves to something far greater than, than a piece of plaster. It's not just a piece of plaster. It's a reminder of the incredible virtues of Mother Teresa, right. as an example. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Now, some, some of the other, we, we mentioned ashes. Right. And when the priest puts ashes on a person, uh, he says, one of the options is to say, uh, remember, man, that you are dust, and unto dust you shall return. Quoting from Genesis 3. And that's the purpose of them, to remind us, you're going to die. Right, right. You, it's, it's not to show that we're fasting. It's to show you're going to die. And so is everybody who sees this. Yes. We're all going to die. So you need to put your life in perspective because you will be dead a lot longer than you were ever alive. And, and, you know, Scripture said today, too, it's the appropriate time. I mean, the time is now. It's yep. the appropriate time today, so, to yes. realize that, right. you know, our death is imminent. You're right. So, so, so we have, have a sense of that. And we gain perspective from reminding that God said that. Right. But he also has an ultimate purpose that uh, we, we can end up in heaven with him. That's why we want to take time to fast. Some of the other sacramentals that you mentioned, uh, the poems. Why do we have poems on Palm Sunday? Well, the, the poems for Palm Sunday is the same as it was in, in Scripture. It's, it's the welcoming Jesus, you know, into Jerusalem. We're, we're welcoming that time before, um, before Holy, the Holy Week. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, that's the poems are bringing us to that Hallelujah! That we sing Hosanna in, in the highest, and um, that's welcoming in that time before, before then we say, you know, crucify him. So. And after you get the it. palms, you just sort of toss them out. Well, we use ours, and and I think a lot of people do. We yeah. we use them throughout the year. We put them behind our crucifix, make a cross, and put them behind our crucifix. Right. And that's the thing. A lot of things in sacramentals we don't think of except once a year. But you know, just like the ashes, Father, when we were talking about he makes the sign of the cross with the ashes, there's a lot of times in throughout our week that we use the sign of the cross. Before before we uh, read the gospel, we, we make the sign of the cross on our forehead. Well, As you a, mentioned that in your book. That, that's, one of the, the, that's the first sacramental, that just making a sign of the cross right. is a sacramental. That's right. When did the church come up with that? Oh gosh, you're asking me times, dates and times. <laughs> come on. Oh. Well, then I'll give an answer. There, I know you because know the you answer. wrote it in your book. <laughs> I know <laughs> you know it. Yeah, it, 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 we see it already in the second century uh, as something that they just <laughs> took for granted already. Tertullian mentions that they signed the cross, and you see other saints uh, talking about how everything was eaten, your bread. Uh, Middle Eastern women still, when they make bread, they'll knead the dough, make a sign of the cross on it, knead it again, make a sign of the cross. And they're praying for all the people who will eat their bread. Oh, that's beautiful. You know, yeah. and that this is a very ancient. Even Saddam Hussein noticed that Muslims, Muslim women, when they made bread, used to put three holes in honor of the Blessed Trinity. Wow. You know, because yeah. they ha had one time been a Christian country. So, you know, the, the, it's, it's something that was uh, very much, you know, part of the early, early church to make the sign of the cross. It's not medieval or anything. Right. It's from the earliest centuries. Well, and I think, too, that the, in, we talk about the graces and we talk about um, a furthering of our sacramentals, our use mm. of our sacramentals. And I think one important thing that I got out of this entire project was to slow down as we make the sign of the cross. You know, sometimes, so, so many times, you dip your hand in the holy water and you make the sign of the cross yeah. and you don't think about the water. Uh, you don't think about the cross and the power of the cross. Yeah. And I think that's been a lot of, um, 
you know, I learned a lot writing this book as far as sure. as far as that goes, just about, like you said, the history, which I can't remember, yeah. but the graces and the stories, the stories from other people. And I think that's extremely important too, mm -hmm. is the stories of people using the sacramentals. And that is definitely something we have to keep passing down to our children about how my mom prayed, prays, still prays the St. Teresa Novena. And, and the St. Andrew Novena at Christmas for specific things. And mm -hmm. she gets a lot of roses, I will say that. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, but I tell you, and the things that, that we just need to, to pass on to our, our children about, about the sacramentals and the richness of the traditions of our faith. Sure. And, you know, one of the most popular uh, uh, sacramentals that we have of all time is the rosary. Right. Now, what can you tell us about the rosary? By the way, I, I've, I've got one here. This is my favorite rosary. It's made out of olive seeds from the Garden of Gethsemane. Uh, the, the Franciscans made this. So it's not only a rosary, but uh, it, the oh, olive wow. trees, there are eight olive trees in the Garden of Gethsemane whose root system goes back 2,500 years. So the tops of the trees were cut down at earlier times, but the root system is 2,500 years old. They were 500 years old at the time of Christ, and they still give olives. Wow. And so from that, the, the Franciscan friars stationed at uh, the Garden of Gethsemane make a few rosaries. Um, from what they get there, so they gave me And what's the relic this. in the back? And, and it's got a piece of soil from the Garden of Gethsemane, oh, wow. you know, embedded in the metal, yeah. you know, there. So that is beautiful. With that Franciscan seal. Now, why do we use the rosary? It's not, a lot of people are just wearing it as a decoration. <laughs> yeah. And that's not why we wear rosaries, is it? No. No, 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 it's a reminder. To, mm -hmm. It's a reminder of the life of Jesus and Mary. We, mm -hmm. we say, you know, the decades of the rosary, we stop and say, the, a lot of us say a scripture, the actual scriptural rosary mm -hmm. um, with our rosary, but it's, you know, it's, it, it is the life of, of uh, Mary and Jesus. And that's, we meditate on the, on the different mysteries of the rosary as we say the rosary. So it becomes mm -hmm. uh, uh, one of the important parts of the rosary is we're going through the entire life of Christ, right. his uh, conception, his birth, his growing up, his public ministry and the new luminous mysteries, his saving passion and death, and then his glorious resurrection. All of this, it, we, we go to that, the key elements and it's uh, praying our way through the creed in some ways. Right. So this is a very important. Uh, I was speaking with the Dominican sister the other day about, we, we were just talking about sacramentals and um, my sister had said that someone came in the store and, and asked to, to buy a rosary and he was trying it on over his head. And she said, you know those, we use that to pray with. We, and we meditate on the life of mm -hmm. Jesus and Mary. Well, mm -hmm. oh, oh no, I had no idea. He said, I had exactly. no idea what it was for. I thought it was a piece of jewelry. So in, he ended up leaving with the crucifix instead of with the rosary because what he really wanted to do was have Christ, you know, with him at all times. And, and the sister just made the comment of the Blessed Mother leading the man to Christ, which, you know, so much she does for us. Yeah, that yeah, That she yeah. leads us to Christ. And I just thought that was a beautiful. And we can always toss, especially if you have a nice bookstore like you do, if they're doing that, Give them a little booklet on how right. to say the rosary, a little exactly pamphlet. Exactly right. Get them started. Exactly right. A lot of people also don't realize that the Bible is a sacramental, that this is not something that Jesus Christ instituted. Right. He didn't write the Bible. Right. That was written by the church and preserved. So this is also, and, and when you read Scripture, you get indulgences for doing so. We, the church encourages us to read the Bible. Right, that's right, yep. You know, I imagine you sell a lot of Bibles over at your we do, bookstore. We do sell a lot yeah. of Bibles, yes, yes. In terms of some of the other sacramentals, what, what else do you see as key with some of the others? 
Um, well, I, the novenas, we, we um, of course, pray in the novenas, I think, as far as, and, and chaplets and novenas as well. So explain what a novena is. So a novena is a nine day, or some of them are nine hour, but the comes from, you know the Latin, Latin word, word I for guess, nine. right, mm -hmm. thank you. And, um, and we say the prayer, the same prayer over and over normally. Uh, for nine days, and it's usually to a specific saint, um, you know. But there are some many to Mary and, and many to Christ as well. But mm -hmm. um, that we pray, and usually we pray it for a specific intention. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're asking for them to intercede for us um, on a specific intention, and that's why that's why I said with the Saint Teresa that you know my mom prays that and. She promises, you know, the the smell or the actual roses. If you know, when when you finish praying them, and she's had many of those, you know, it just it's nice to have that um, acknowledgement at the end of a novena. But that's and then and then there's chaplets as well, which are the shorter. I say the shorter version. Some of them aren't shorter, but of um, beads generally that we pray a chaplet to, a, and same thing to a specific mm -hmm. saint for a different need. Um, but you know, Father Crosses, Crucifixes, I mean, there's a lot, our pictures, all the images that we see, the statues sure. and um, that we see are all sacramentals that help us. Yeah, I think it's also worth uh, uh, pointing out that, you know, with the rosary, there are 50 beads for saying the Hail Mary, and it was meant to be a poor man's way of praying the 150 Psalms. Psalms right. Right. And so that was one of the ideas behind it. For those who did not read or write, they could memorize the Hail Marys. Right. And then you also, with novenas, I, I think to remind people that it came from that time between Ascension Thursday and Pentecost. Right. Right. That it was nine days of yes. prayer, and then on the tenth day, the Holy Spirit was given to them. That's right. But it was the, that's why we have nine days for novenas, going back to Jesus saying, "Go back and pray until the Father gives you the gift." Took nine days, so we'll keep that up. It's that's when the Father wants to give us an answer to our prayers. Let's keep it up. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Um, the other. Um, sacramental that we haven't spoken about yet is, is relics, and that's yes. why I asked if there was a relic in the back of yes. that yes. piece. And, yeah, this this um, is a reliquary here that uh, was given to me by my neighbor. Uh, he's moving in. Uh, the, the church tries to be very careful with these relics. Right. So there's a piece of paper that comes from the Vatican authenticating these Relics, right? And in this are four relics, oh, wow. in this one reliquary: Saint Matthew, Saint Mark, Saint Luke, and Saint John. Wow! So this is a reliquary of the four evangelists. And you know, I've got the paper showing that this was authenticated. And you may not sell these, can you? Right, because you know, they're blessed. I mean, that's, that's right. all there is to it. They're holy. That's even on that TV show, Pawn Stars. Somebody tried to pawn some relics, and when they had the sheet of paper that goes with the transit said this may not be sold, they wouldn't buy it. Oh, good. They showed respect. <laughs> yeah. God bless them. Yeah, yeah. Because um, you, you can't, though some people do sell them to less scrupulous stores, mm -hmm. and if you see them in stores, I urge people to buy them. Right. Yeah, I, I don't. I hate that you have to buy them, but right. they won't give them to you. No. So, rescue them from the stores, right. so they can be properly put back in churches. Right. Um, tragically, I think a lot of priests and religious were responsible for just sort of removing them, and uh, for those who still love them. Get them back. Yeah, 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 exactly. And we started selling some, carrying some antiques in the store. So I'd been antiquing, and the same thing. You see, you see relics out there in the yes, antique stores in the where antique they're trying stores. to sell them. And you're, exactly. You're, so. I mean, I just have told many of those people, those are holy. They're blessed, and you know, of course, they're thousands of dollars. It's crazy. So, Oof. Uh, yeah. but we don't I mean, want that. We can. 
Right. Well, we have to take a little break. We want to come back and see if you have any questions about the various sacramentals that we use in our church, why we use them, what they are, where they come from, and we'll also find out from our studio audience. So please stay with us. Right. Are you ready for some questions? Ready. Let's get you up. Sir, where are you from? I'm from Tampa, Father. Great. And your question? Uh, my question is, we know we ha understand as well that we have to reverence and to actively participate in the Mass. Mm -hmm. But sometimes uh, the reverence is uh, not really imposed or being practiced because there are a lot of clapping in the church during mm -hmm. Mass. Mm -hmm. Uh, what can we do to uh, really reverence the Mass and also be actively participant without the clapping? Yeah. I, Go ahead. Uh, all yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, um, I'll, I'll respond. Well, I think we have to be very alert that Holy Mass is not a theater performance, that we're not there to, you know, go ahead and applaud and cheer uh, a, as if this were a performance. We're praying. Now, we can feel very moved, uh, say, by the musicians. They may have done something that's absolutely stunning and, and beautiful, but we can show that appreciation in another way, so that Mass stays focused on adoration of God. That needs to be the focus. It's not about us. Right. Um, I, 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 I've said this many times, we were talking at dinner, um, so sometimes the hymns that we use at church have to be paid better attention to because they are so much focused on our own self-congratulation that you're gathering us in here, we're doing, we're the light of the world, we are building the kingdom of God. It's all focused on what we're doing, and instead of singing a beautiful, beautiful Protestant hymn, How Great Thou Art, we're looking for God and each other to say how great we art. You know, and that is what lends itself to that performance mentality instead of worship. And we need to keep ourselves centered on God, our Lord, and not on ourselves. And how, how wonderful we are and how lucky you are to have us in this church, God. Are you listening? And sometimes that's what we're saying in these hymns. So change the hymns to worshiping Christ. You know, get that going. Let's take a call. We have Kathy. Kathy, where are you calling from? Yes, hi, Father. I'm calling from northwest Colorado, up in the mountains. Great, great. And your question? My question is um, you know, the, our wonderful Saint, Padre Pio. He used to call the rosary his weapon. He'd say, bring me my weapon. <laughs> Um, and our Blessed Mother at Fatima said, pray the rosary every day. Yeah. So 
there's a lot of power in the rosary. So my question to you and your guest would be, um, how do the sacramentals aid us, specifically the rosary, in spiritual warfare? All right, why don't you respond well, to the, that? the rosary is our most powerful prayer, I believe. I mean, uh -huh. I, I do believe that, and I believe a lot of the saints, and even Our Lady has said that, that mm -hmm. that's, you know, for it's, especially in this time of great need for spiritual warfare, we need to pray the rosary every day. Mm -hmm. And you have quite a yeah. rosary there, speaking of weapons. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was going to show uh, some viewers sent uh, this rosary here. You can't see it uh, too well up close. This is not the one from uh, the Garden of Gethsemane, but this one is made out of spent 22 bullets. Uh, there's no gunpowder in it. Um, this is an example of beating swords into plowshares and spears into uh, pruning hooks and bullets into rosary beads. So we're transforming them. And uh, it was uh, one of the Fathers of Mercy who likes to talk about the rosary as his uh, 50 bullet clip. You know, that, uh, well, this is what I call my weapon of mass oration. You know, that uh, we, we do need to, uh, uh, some of you viewers made it for me, uh, which I appreciate. But yeah, it, it's, it's, it's something uh, in spiritual war. Plus, think about, in, in terms of spiritual warfare, uh, you have a, a lot of uh, beautiful religious icons and crosses and such and we have from our religious catalog. Think about that in terms of spiritual warfare, where the world tries to send you pictures that are evil. Oh, yeah. Look at yeah. how many people, young kids sometimes, get unsolicited pornographic images. Right. That's from the other side. Right. That's from the side of evil. That's the side that enslaves women and children for sexual purposes. And we need to have holy images that counteract the images of evil that come in our world and fill our houses and our minds with that and not with some of the evil images that the world would give us. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Let's take another question from our studio audience. Ma'am, where are you from? Val Rico, Florida. All right, yes. great. Good to have you. Yes. And your question? Thank you. Um, I would like to hear you ponder more about this uh, scapular. If you yeah. could talk to us about the scapular. Right. Thank and, you. Um, of course, there's the brown scapular, which is the most popular scapular given mm -hmm. by St. Simon Stock, but to St. Simon Stock. But there's all sorts of scapulars. I mean, the original, there's, there's um, religious scapulars that, that the sisters wear and the, and the uh, priests wear that, or the brothers wear um, that are part of their clothes that yeah, protect. It's a and long cloth, cloth when the sisters right? and monks and other religious wear. It's a long cloth on either side. From, yes, front and yeah. back. And, and the uh, devotional scapulars, which we wear as well, are the same. They're cloth on the front and the back, joined by a cord usually. Mm -hmm. But there's the brown scapular, and there's there's red. I mean, there's all sorts of scapulars. Right. There's to Mary and Saint, you know, Michael, Our Lady of Guadalupe sure. and Michael and Padre Pio and everything. But they are. There, you know, there are promises attached to certain scapulars, especially the brown scapular. Mm -hmm. And when we wear what, them, by there. promises, what, what were some of those promises? Well, some of the promises of the brown scapular included, you know, not, not die, not going, uh, suffering the fires of hell. I mean, everybody would like to keep from that, mm -hmm. um, uh, as well. And that a lady would pray for you to leave purgatory within a short time. In a short period of time, right, right. But with those promises come obligations too. That you have to promise uh, and, and you're obligated to avoid sin. It's not magic. Right, yeah, there's no magic to any of these sacramentals. Right. You're right, you're right. There's, right. You have to do your part on all of them. Uh, yeah, that's important. Sure. And even the word scapular comes from the scapula bones. Yeah. 
the, the shoulder bones because you put them on your shoulder, right? Right. And it's important because in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 12, our Lord said, take my yoke upon your shoulder for my burden is light and, and easy. You know, that this is a symbol of putting on the yoke of Jesus Christ. My yoke is light and my burden is easy. That the scapular is a symbol of saying, okay, Lord, I want to hitch up to you. I put this like as a yoke is to get an ox, a couple of oxen to pull something. Right. So a lot of dumb oxen wearing <laughs> these things and getting hitched up to Christ. Sir, where are you from? Tampa, Florida. Oh, good to have you. And your question? Well, it's just sharing about the novena, that sacramental thing. We have a family novena over the hundred years now, done simultaneously in the United States and in the Philippines. My question is, is it appropriate for me to propagate that nationally in that novena? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I would say absolutely. Anything that's, you know, if anything to further our devotionals, I mean, I would think would be a wonderful thing. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it, a question I would have, is it a novena that was approved by the church? Yes, Father, yes. Yeah. It so, is. So, uh, so I go with her answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, you know, novenas are checked by the church, right. by various officials in the church. <laughs> And if they're approved, then they uh, should be propagated uh, and encouraged. Uh, and there are all kinds of novenas, like the church prays for the coming of the Holy Spirit from the celebration of the Ascension Thursday through Pentecost. Right. These are good things to do. And, and 100 years. I mean, they've been going... That's that's amazing. Yeah, I would say we'd good. all like that yeah, in our yeah. families. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a great family tradition, right. and sharing it with that's one of the great things about sharing these different gifts. If we share them, nothing gets lost; right. it only increases. Right. It's like knowledge. Yeah, so that's a good thing, ma'am. Let me guess that you're from Florida, too. <laughs> no. Where are you from? Brandon. Brandon, where's that? Florida. That, that is, I said Florida. <laughs> I didn't say Tampa. Oh, uh, they're trying to trick me. Yeah. But you all are from a, a group, and you have a very nice T-shirt that's I celebrating Lent. It? Yes. Right? Yeah, it has some horrible. of the themes of Lent. You've got a uh, priest putting ashes mm -hmm. there, some... All, uh, olive branches. Yes. Some, I don't know if you know this, but in some places they use olive branches and palms oh. or just olive branches. Did you know that? I did not know that. Did you sell any olive I branches that you stole? I think you got to expand. I think I need to get some. <laughs> <laughs> and in the Holy Land, they, they do. They use olive branches and palms. Let me give, before we get to your question, we have a couple of minutes here. Do you know why olives, olive branches, and palm branches? No? Because in the Middle East, those are considered the two most perfect trees. You can use everything on each tree. So you can eat the olives, and you can eat the dates. You can take the pits from the dates, grind them into flour, and make bread. You can take the olive pits, which have a lot of olive oil in them, and you use that, along with the olive leaves, to smoke meats and other things. Use it for smoking food. And the wood of each one you can use, and the leaves, uh, of course, to build things, and the leaves of the palm branch, you can make a roof out of. Oh, so wow. every part of it gets used. That's so that's the perfect one. And that's why there's two perfect trees, their branches were used to praise Jesus as he entered uh, Palm Sunday. 
this one. That's awesome. You ever knew that? Didn't know it. See? Didn't know it. Life is, uh, I was able to, uh, a few times, to celebrate Palm Sunday in Jerusalem. Oh, wow. And, you know, and I, I ask questions. Now, speaking of questions, what is on <laughs> your mind? Well, I want to uh, I want to get your comment regarding <clears throat> we have a friend who is a non-Catholic. Yeah. Who's uh, giving out uh, Bible study. Okay. And is being attended by Catholics. Okay. So I want to know. Um, me and my husband didn't want to attend this because. Yeah. So are the ones who's uh, attending this meeting or Bible study committing sin mm -hmm. or? Okay. Because this person who's leading the Bible study doesn't even believe in, I don't think, believe in Mary. Uh-huh. So, so what, what do you think? Do you have any opinions on well, that? Well, I mean, I'm, you know, I always think if they're not against us, but if, if they're teaching the wrong things, I mean, I, I guess it depends on what the teachings are. Because mm -hmm. Scripture itself, I mean, Scripture is, our Scripture is our Scripture. Mm -hmm. but, but as far as when you say some of the things they don't believe, I think there'd be a question there. Yeah. But you don't want to lead them astray. He would be, uh, uh, my question is along the same lines. Are they telling the other people at the Bible study, you should not believe in Mary? Well, I, Are I, they saying that? I, I don't know that for oh, sure. See, that's what I would ask. That's, what I, that's a good question to ask. Mm -hmm. You know, what are they saying about devotion to the Blessed Mother and to the saints. And, you know, um, for instance, also, you know, for the, some of the Catholics, they're, they're missing seven books of the Bible in the Protestant Bible. They took right. seven books out. So, um, you know, uh, back in the 1500s, they took them out. They try to say we added them in. But that's not true. <laughs> they took them out. They were there. Uh, I, I, uh, in January, I saw the oldest copy of the Bible, the oldest Bible, uh, of Christian Bible that exists. And it has those seven books in it. So this is normal. So are they, are they speaking against that? And are they attacking Catholic teaching? There's a lot that we, sh most things we would share in common with our Protestant right. brothers and sisters. Right. We want to share the Word of God with them right. when we can. If they're attacking, though, then I would say to Catholics, don't go to that. If they are sharing what we share in common and teaching the, the faith that in Jesus and the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, that we have in common, fine. Then that's no problem. But um, what you may want to also do is get hold of some of my Bible studies on various topics. Find out if they're teaching. So, uh, for instance, I have one on the Holy Spirit. Do they? Some churches no longer teach that the Holy Spirit is God. Did you know that? There are a lot of churches that don't even teach that anymore. And the, they, uh, do they deny Mary? Well, take a look at my Bible study on Mary. And what are they, you know, hopefully, if they don't believe in the Eucharist, they may be quiet. But take a look and see how that would compare with my Bible study on the Eucharist. There are a lot of other Bible studies out there on these Catholic issues. And let's check to make sure that they... Yeah, yeah, you weren't invited. Well, <laughs> that might that's be not a good sign for the other <laughs> right, Catholics. Right. Yeah. Ma'am, I, again, I assume that you're also from Florida, but uh, <laughs> Latin pilgrimage. And what is your question or comment? Father, um, I'm sure everybody has friends that are non Catholics. Yeah, sure. And we've been giving a gifts of a cross, but there's no, you know, Jesus or crucifix. It's not a crucifix. Um, what should we do? about that uh, you know it, it's overwhelming that we keep I keep receiving them and I have them at home and I don't know what to do anymore okay but I think a cross is a beautiful sacramental yeah. I, I think the cross I mean you know it reminds us we've talked about the cross that we made on our foreheads today we talk mm -hmm. about the cross that we that we sign ourselves with mm -hmm. I think it's a beautiful uh, reminder 
of um, you know Christ's death. So it, it's not not bad. You know, there's nothing wrong with it at all. Um, you know, it's uh, but of course you can put a crucifix right in the middle of your collection of crosses. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> that way you got them both. That's right. Um, uh, one other thing, we, we've got only a couple minutes. You, you mentioned in your book incense. Uh -huh. That's a sacramental too. That's right, absolutely. Why, some people have a tr problem with it, but why do we use incense? Well, I think the incense is used to, you know, ra lift up our prayers to, to the heavens, to mm -hmm. lift up our prayers to Christ. And, you know, I tell that great story of uh, our deacons coming in and, and the deacon, tell, well, actually the deacon tells the story of being the incenser uh, during their ordination, which is a beautiful story. And, and mm -hmm. I, I watched as the, as the smoke just, just hung in the air during mm -hmm. the entire mm -hmm. uh, service. You know, it, it was almost as if it was gathering our prayers you know, to, to lift them up to God. And I just thought, I just think it's a beautiful sacrament. And you, you see that in Psalm 141, may our prayers go up like incense, right. uh, as well as all the way from Genesis, the aroma of the smoke goes up to God and is pleasing to God, all the way from Genesis to the end of the book of Revelation, where incense is also burned in heaven. And it's there it's called our, our prayers. One last thing, and this is something you cannot do at your store. That is, bless that stuff, you know, all the religious objects yourself, and sell them because they're blessed. Right. Right? That's right. That's, you can't do that. You can't sell a blessed item. You're correct. You know, that's, that's called simony. That's a sin. But we sell, the, you, you sell, I don't, but you sell these uh, religious objects, and when, you, when people do buy them, they ought to bring them to church and let the priest oh, bless them. Oh, absolutely. We encourage them to be blessed. Correct. Yeah, 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 yes, yeah, yeah. yes. Especially the kids are all excited about getting them blessed. Oh, you know? yeah, so yeah, yeah. It's a great thing. And that's it also part of where the church is not just a, 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 an object of art. Right. It's also something that in being blessed by the church helps us draw closer to Christ and his church. Absolutely. Well, we've run out of time. And I just want to let people know that you can go to juliedorchcragen.com and you can uh, get her wonderful book, Amazing Graces, The Blessings of Sacramentals. Uh, it's available at ewtnrc.com. Uh, it's item 36872, 36872. And of course, you can buy it at her store too. Absolutely. <laughs> In Nashville, Tennessee, <laughs> if you're there. Right. So, May the Lord bless all of you and keep you. And I'll use these uh, relics of the evangelist. Lord bless you by the intercession of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Bless you to know his word and cherish it, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And have a wonderful and blessed Lent. God bless you. <laughs>